Uh, no foreplay. We bike. We back. It's like special edition. Yes. Huh? We don't usually have episodes where we come in with no music. That's None how, at all. That's how you know it's special. But you know when, when special people fly fly in, you got to grab them when you can. You, you got to get them when you can. Uh, so let's get to it. And introduce our guest. Uh, um, Helen, born in Chicago. By way of Atlanta, Georgia now, we have <laughs> NBA TV's finest producer behind the scenes, Kevin Cottrell, yes, Clark Atlanta sir. University alum. Um, he went to the prestigious Beasley Academic Center. That's important. That's very important. <laughs> with, where it all began. All y'all sucking y'all teeth and sighing hard. Fuck you. Say my name, bro. Say my name, Douglas. Bro. <laughs> Say my name, bro. <laughs> oh, Kev, what's good, what's man? Good, man. I've been trying to, I've been trying to get up here for a long time now. Long time. Here. Logistics is the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> it worked out perfect. It, yes. it, it truly did. This fine Saturday evening, um, after the Chicago Classic. Yeah, man, we got banged. I saw the yeah. score like thirty-one thirteen. Yeah, we got a. Uh, it was competitive in the first half, but got away in the second. That's, that's all right. That's all I can ask for. That's all right. A little competitive. That's okay. You know what, man? Um, the cl- I mean, the classic was. Coming from a not HBCU background, the classic was dope. This is this is Bradley and George liking pictures and texting me right now. I'm a little upset. Tell them to stop texting me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, two other Clark guys. I just love like black black people. I love black shit because I wasn't. I didn't even like. I was tinkering, but I wasn't thinking about going to the classic. Right. And I was just in the area. I made. I went to. I was gonna go to gourmet chicken. I was gonna get me some fish. I was like, all right, man. And I was like, you know what? The classic right over there. I gotta go to where the black people at. Uh, it's it's just certain shit you can't escape. I love it because all the old black ladies there, they all gonna act like they your grandma. You can't replace that feeling. Black people, okay. we black people, we the only people who love that. But like. Who act like that? But that shit is cold. Like I had a lady yeah. cut in front of me in line, and she was like, "They ain't, they ain't making my seven up right." I was like, oh, shit, "All right, like you go right ahead." Yeah, like, yeah. Hey man, it's black excellence. Black, black excellence. excellence. Ain't, black ain't nothing like it, man. Ever, ever, ever. ever. Ain't nothing like it. We may be oppressed, but when we get together <laughs> for them few hours, we are not oppressed. We are kicking it. Even, even the spirit was upon me today. I, I donned my Howard shirt and hat today. Oh. You know, I was walking around feeling myself like tweet. I even put it on Snapchat like I'm feeling real cute. I need to get outside and do something. <laughs> I, I had an inkling to come down there. I had an inkling, but then I took a nap. And yeah, yeah, at our age, that for real. Nah, well, the code that I'm gonna say this about classics. That's actually what made me want to go to an HBCU. I was I probably start going to classics at about like eight nine mm-hmm. between Chicago Classic, but really the Circle City Classic. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget. I saw FAMU, so the football team was good at the time. The uniforms was dope, and then the band came, and I was like, oh man, I'm going to FAM. So like. Even my senior year, I thought I was going to fan when my mother was like, nah, but I uh, ended up still going to Clark and, you know, I played, got to play there. So A lot cool. of the blacks always talked about fam. You mm-hmm. I don't know if they just like saying fam you or what. I just think it was, at one point, it was just the most popular yeah, because of the band. Yeah, the band yeah, traveled yeah. around the world. Yeah, yeah. So if you didn't know nothing else about fam, you know, which I think is like a pharmacy school. Uh, or agriculture. Agriculture. Like, like, it's, yeah. it's not even nothing I probably would have did there. <laughs> but, you know, but still, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the classics is good for, for attracting black kids to school, if nothing else. Because you can see it on TV, yeah. but when you're seeing people donning all of the, the gear and the nail, yeah, you're like, man, I want to be a part of this experience. So it was cool to, you know, be a part of it with my school for once because Clark, they don't, they don't really get invited. To the <laughs> right, right. See, that was dope. That was something. That was a nice change of pace. Yeah. I was like Clark. I'm well, Clark. They, they they they've done the past like couple of years now, yeah, right? So, so come to find out, and it was it was like this when we was there. But Clark, the second largest amount of students at Clark are from Chicago. Mm-hmm. So they felt like, man, we got all of this room in Chicago. Let's keep going because mm-hmm. clearly mm-hmm. we got a pipeline. So uh, you know, that classic brought them back. Makes sense. Yeah. Because you know, before Clark, they had like some other schools that nobody was really feeling like. like it was like it was okay, but like, like you know, Southern Negro. University. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was really like universities I've never heard of, like Southern, or like Central, Southern, Southern or like Central yeah. State, like Kentucky State, like you know, like that should be it's cool for like they hundred alumni, but like yeah. Clark Atlanta, 
up here, that's yeah. something that you know somebody yeah. regular like myself who has who's not an alumnus, but <laughs> you, you know I've known a bunch yeah. of people right. from the university. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll slide down. You know, right. it didn't happen again, but you know, I thought about it at least. <laughs> Cause only because like my experience with, with classes, like when we used to go to the one in St. Louis, Dion, like that was cool, but it, after 20 minutes, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. See, here's here's the thing: we we were younger then. That's true right? too. So we were younger. We were in this middle and age, like, and I, I kind of feel like people who were that age still have that experience where they're kind of there, but you're looking like, oh, shit, like, I'm in this middle age. I don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. I'm college age. I don't go to one of these schools, so it feel weird, right? you just strolling around looking for hoes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, this time, what happens differently is that you're older, so being older, like, this year, put it like this. You got a chosen few DJs party inside the class. Party. I saw your snap to that. I was, I was like, like, I was like, Wait, that's DJ. And he's like, this DJ Wayne Williams, and he like, yo, this DJ Wayne Williams, he going in, and then he just named off the rest of the chosen yeah. few DJs. So you got a party in there. They they kicking it right. So people with house music, he he threw on percolate, the whole place changed up, right? So you got them. Then you got all the people you walk around, you see who went to HBCUs, people who didn't. People just want to be around black people. The tailgate people mm. had. The, it was. It was just like now, that's why I wanted. Guys, it was full DJs out. Like, that's why I wanted shit. to be there for the tailgate. And tailgate looked like it was real. Yeah, yeah, tailgate, mean, was yeah, cool. was yeah cool. tail, tailgate was dope. But it's like you know that inside too, and also being at this age, it kind of hits you to see one thing the youth. Right, mm-hmm. so you see all the young people that you know in high school who get exposed to all this culture. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't go to a class in high school. If I, I would have went to a class in high school, I wouldn't have took anything but an HBCU after seeing that. Yeah. Um, what What's funny about that shit? I definitely applied to Clark. I definitely got in. Clark sent me alumni postcards and shit, and I'm like, I never, I never enrolled. I'm going to tell him, you know, if you want to send me a degree, you want to send me, just holler at your boy. You know? Send me, send me one. But yeah, man, I, I, I think that's a great like. You know, I, I think everything about that is it's just dope and great. So yeah. See, my my pops, he 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 hit me. Like my pops was real big on school. So the first thing he hit me with was like, <clears throat> he big on school, but he real about everything else. So he's like, boy, if I send you to a HBCU, you can be around all that black coochie. And I was like, damn, pops, are you serious? He was like, man, think about this. If you go down to a college like where I was going, SIU, he's like, y'all small. Small population in Carbondale. You probably go have your pick and choose. You probably see five girls in a semester who you might like. He said, but if you go to an HBCU, son, with all that extra time on your hands, you're not going to be visiting the city. You're going to be down there like the whole time. Right. Can you handle it? So now I start getting doubts in my head. Like, I'm taking my ass to SIU. I can't. You'd have been able to handle it. But one thing about <laughs> HBCU, seriously, it, it's a couple of misconceptions. We don't, we don't party. Like, I think y'all probably party ten times more than we do. Okay. Seriously, especially for Clark, because we're actually in a city. Right. So, you know, whoever was hot when I was in school, T.I. 112, yeah. Luda, they was getting all the attention. They can roll up on campus yeah. or have a party wow. on campus. If you can't afford it, you just, yo, how was that party yesterday? <laughs> but we, we couldn't party on our campuses like that. Oh. You know what I'm saying? They had a lot more regulations. Our, you know, and our thing was, too, if you made it past freshman year, you was going to make it. Freshman year was the year like either you made it past freshman year or you didn't. But if you made it past freshman year, it got to the point where people was like, yo, fam, you gotta do that work, fam. You got that you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. people was pushing each other, especially I know us Chicagoans, because it was a bunch of us and people were just like, Oh, y'all ain't gonna make it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Y'all having too much fun. But you know, we was like, Hey, I'll be mean, hey George, you got that paper done, fam? Like, mm-hmm. I'm already done with my G. Let's let's get it going, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Or or vice versa. I, I think our, our infrastructure was as such, like, especially in AU, because we had more house, we had more brown, we had, mm-hmm. it was competitive, too. So you didn't want people to be like, oh, man, the more house, you went to more house, are oh, you smart? Yeah. And they looking at you as the Clark kid, like, hey, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, just right, as smart, right. I got the same, you know, that's so. That's kind of what, what we went through with, I mean? that's kind of what we go through with SIU and U of I. Like, people automatically, like, discredit us, oh, y'all do that's Fuck you, Ava. Yeah, easy. <laughs> Landslide. <laughs> but yeah, they come at us like that. And, and what you were saying, that's kind of how me and Dion was talking. Like, if we went to an HBCU, we probably felt like we'd be letting the world down if we didn't graduate. Oh, no, you definitely. You, you, I mean, you would, you know, because you're going to have pride. You know, yeah. Yeah, that pride would have been instilled in you. You know, how people told me how Howard was the best black college and all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like, all right, for the show, them, what, I, what I'm <laughs> popping with, you know what I'm saying? Right. So. 
like I say, it's a family atmosphere, man. They would have made sure you was, uh, as long as you wanted to do it. They made sure Man. you got it done. That's yeah. the thing. I seen you. Yeah, we came down there for spring break. Was on the yard for student body elections. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> I have my doubts. If I would have been. <laughs> I have my doubts. <laughs> it was some no, girl from been. Memphis. Jesus. Woo. Have been mercy. Been. <laughs> 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 Anywho. Anywho. Um, so, that's everything about the classic. Classic. Yes. I mean, you know. It was classic. It, it was classic. It was classic. Um, the the next kind of portion of it, um, I, I I got I always give a memory about somebody. It's like I, I didn't have story time. Um, what what I I went to the A. What was it? Two thousand fifteen. Yeah. I came down and I hit Kev, and Kev was gracious enough to let me come to the studio. It, it and it was it was so funny because it's like. You see, like, where somebody work, like, on TV. It's like, okay, I know Kev worked for NBA TV. And it's like, okay, like, cool. Then it's like, I remember going there and, you know, everything. We we go in. So it's me and my girl. We go in and I'm looking like, okay, we walking around. Then it's like, you see the set and it hit me. Like, right now. I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. Like, he got, like, a for real legit job here. Yeah. Like, I, I was just like, <laughs> like, he's supposed to be here. You know, just sitting there looking like... <laughs> I see this set damn man like every week like, and, and, and it's like you look at and I think the the funny the funny part is you're walking around you see the set you're seeing Kev around the set and Kev took us around and looking I'm like okay like my mind just started working seeing how the whole operation work I'm like yo this is so it's so fucking intricate you know yeah. what I'm saying it seemed like people just go I'm like yo this is so intricate and and um, I'm looking at that and then I never forget I'm sitting here and people was like, oh, man, like, you know, once they found out I was with Kev, it was like, oh, okay. You know, it was mm-hmm. like, I got a stamp. So I was like, oh, shit. I was like, damn. I was like, <laughs> not only, I'm like, they like Kev, because, you know, some of y'all, if y'all take people to y'all job, right. they're going to look at them like, fuck you, <laughs> too. Why are you here? Because this motherfucker ain't got too long either. Right, shit. <laughs> fuck, wait fuck, he bringing new people in. We trying to get him out the door. Right, man. <laughs> now, so, you know, they like Kev, because. It'd be random times, like 9.46 p.m. I'm like, man, I'm tired. And then they just had this motherfucking come on screen doing examples and shit. I'm like, man, this nigga Kev set one more screen. One more screen. Right, man. where he set one more screen. Man. Like, Kev is like the official screen setter for all NBA TV examples. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what really got me? The thing is, like, you know, I'm, I'm a Laker fan. Like, I really do love the Lakers. Like, even in the losing times, it's like, all right, man. Like, you know, we, we go through it. So, at the time... Who was on that night? I know was, Grant Hill. Was it Rick Fox? Grant Hill, Rick Fox. Yeah. And so we were in the back at one point, and, you know, it's like you always heard, Grant Hill always seemed cool, right, on TV. And I was like, you know, and then Grant Hill just started talking to me. And I was like, oh, shit, this motherfucker Grant Hill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, it's like we just started talking, and then somehow we get to talking about the Lakers. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I'm just sitting here like I, it's like outside of my own body, like me and Grant Hill sitting here. Like I'm like me and Grant Hill sitting there talking about the fucking Lakers. Like mm-hmm. it, it never thought that would happen in life. And I'm just sitting there like I'm not qualified to talk to Grant Hill. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm sitting here like this is I'm not qualified for this. I'm like, but you know what? <laughs> just keep, keep it going. going. Just yeah. keep it going. Cause he was super cool. And then it's like Rick Fox, super cool. Everybody there was like, you know, super cool. And I'm like, see, look, they cool because I'm here with Kev. Like, yeah. If I was there with somebody on their way out the door. <laughs> Why are you talking to me, fam? The that's guy that put you in here is on, out the door. Johnny, true. who always, oh, Johnny who always drinks the last of the coffee. Right. <laughs> and, never, and never changes like, the pot. That's, that's, that's old boy who ate my lunch one day out the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, it's, a special, it's, it's a special hell for motherfuckers who eat shit in a work fridge. They know they ain't brain. Man, bro. Like, how, how much of a whole do you have to be at work to do that shit on the sneak? Fuck ho, what kind of balls you gotta have to say, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and eat. You don't know what's in that either. You don't know what's in it. What if you allergic to avocado or something? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you just going in the Right, yeah, like this. Yeah. Man, if you if, if, if you listen to this podcast and you do that shit, you a hoe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I'm not missing my words. Like only whole whole motherfuckers steal other people's lunch. <laughs> or if you know somebody at your job and you scared to really confront them. 
call the good fellas with no right. more play. We'll come see June June. Because you got to realize somebody money. somebody who's making their lunch for work are either A, on dietary restrictions, or B, they trying to save some cash, little dietary cash. Restrictions. So, True. like, man, True. like, get off that whole shit, man. Put it's all it's, facts. Just, and we will write you, first we'll do a dear staff letter. Yes. Listen, true story. Somebody ate my shit recently, right? And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you how bogus it was. I went to, I went to Target on my lunch. I took a late lunch. I was working hard. I got back to the office at three thirty from lunch. Three thirty. I put my stuff in the refrigerator at three thirty. I left that day at five thirty. By five thirty, somebody had already took my lunchable. Beat. Oh shit! It was already gone. So then, your next case in point, like my next case was so they had took my shit. I left a note. Now, I had a pack of sausage that I put in the freezer. Mm-hmm. I ate two sausage one day. I go back two days later. Literally, it's it's like somebody had a serving of three sausage. I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, okay, I say, but you know what? Somebody got hungry. They had some sausage. So then the next day. <coughs> That's I go, not excusable, though. I, I know. I That's, know. But okay, the, keep the next going. day, I went to go get some more sausage. And literally, they had left me two sausage in my pack. So out of my pack of ten sausages, I had four of them bitches. Mm. Was and it the brown and serve? That it you... was the brown and serve. Oh, oh hell no. no. Hell no. You don't touch the brown and serve, bro. And, 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 and it was maple, B. It was maple. B. The maple brown and serve? Come first, on. First and foremost. I shouldn't get that excited about maple brown and serve. Them damn sausages should have got thrown. You know, you know these look these look memes that you have. How do you eat brown and serve, brown and serve sausage? Throw them bitches away. Geez. Wait, wait, wait. Shell, no, no West Side of Shell tell us to throw any food away. I've seen what you eat. You <laughs> advertise for toys. <laughs> you advertise for toys. Not too much on toys. At, at, at home, at home, it, I eat Johnsonville sausage. I got time to put in the skill. At work, you just got a minute. Right, right. right. Pop, <laughs> pop them in the microwave. Yeah, my, I don't eat swine no more either, so that shit. You know be what? Good. You do cool. eat swine, but we'll talk about, about that at a later time. <laughs> Care. Yes, sir. So let's let's. So one, um, what what I, I my question is, is this: uh, we was talking about like essentially how is working at, at NBA TV? How how is that? Now that's a good question because um, <laughs> so I'm entering my tenth season. So just thinking about it sometimes Ooh. is like crazy, but. How I got started was You're I was writing. Venture, like, you yeah, got, you get no, the I've real veteran mentality. <laughs> I, I was writing for the uh, the Atlanta paper, uh-huh. and um, crazy thing, it came across my desk that Turner had partnered with the NBA to bring NBA TV to Atlanta. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was the one that you know put the little story up, and my boss, I remember she coming to me like, "Don't even think about it. Like, you're not going." Shit, I'm out of here. Right, right. So I started um, plugging away. I was trying to be a writer for NBA.com. That's all I want to do is like, I just want to write for NBA.com. Right. And the recruiter was just like, nah, like um, we want people that's on the beat of NBA team that's been in with them for a while. That's what we trying to pull away people like that. Mm-hmm. She's like, but I got a position for you. I'm like, what's that? She's like, research. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but it's just going to get me out of here. Uh-huh. Bet. She's like, well, you got to be able to write. She just kept saying, you got to be able to write. So I'm like, all right, cool. No, come to find out. Um, I was going to be writing for Amara Rashad. So this is what blew me, right? So that was like my Jordan growing up because I wanted to, always wanted to write in sports. So mm-hmm. watching Inside Stuff was like, okay, what inside you mean? Stuff. Yes, yeah, right. so I'm like, what you mean writing for much? Like, well, he has a uh, person that writes, <clears throat> but he's not, the person's not coming down from New York with him. Okay. So we, whoever this person is that does research, they also have to be able to write. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. Amara literally took me under his wing, man. Literally, like, I'm talking about Coming to Atlanta, let's go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? I'm bored. Let's go take a drive. Let's just go ride around. Like we just really got to know each other. Then right. he got to the point he found out, are you from Chicago? Are you a Jordan stand? Mm-hmm. What size you wear? Thirteen. Oh, we wear thirteen. Who is we? <laughs> we me and Mike. I got right. a box full of stuff. Right. He's oh, like, oh, oh, right. so oh, 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 I would have broke that and cried. Oh, oh, so, so like then, Jesus. So I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, at the, I'm just trying to stay humble because everybody's yeah. telling me. Horror stories, like man, right. Mod is the worst person to work for. Yeah. And you know I mean? I've heard that before. Like yeah. he was like a, a diva, especially like around the time of the Dream Team and all yeah, that. I, I don't know, but he couldn't have been more gracious to me. Like I've never seen it. That's so crazy. one day it was just like, uh, yeah, call my assistant and she give her your address. I'm like, okay, whatever. One day I'm chilling with my boy, God is my witness. Get a knock on the door, FedEx. It's like ten boxes rolled through. I'm like, what is all of this? It's like all J's. So I'm like, okay. So so 
at this point, this is still year one for me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm here. Like, right, right. Fresh. It's what, no what, time. Uh, some get FedEx not to your door. What's coming? <laughs> <laughs> Probably some work search from HBO. Right. <laughs> so from Amazon Prime. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So so you know from that that point it, it he made me comfortable. So then this is how he got this is how he got me going. So you know you'll see us do arena links at NBA TV. Mm-hmm. We right after the game. So you're talking to the players. Yeah. So how it works normally, because um, I, I now that I've been on for a while, I do this too. Now sometimes I'll coordinate those. At least the Saturday one. So how it goes is we'll be in contact with a team. And we're like, hey, you know, the Cavs going to win. I know you're not going to give me LeBron, but can you give me Kyrie? You're not going to give me Can I give him love? So we'll negotiate. They'll give us a guy. So the guy is coming. And they're like, hey, Kevin Love is, is headed to the drink. So you might have a minute or two. If we're in commercial break, if we're lucky. Well, Lamar would be like, I need three questions. So, like, he'll be looking off the set like, Kevin, I need three questions. Kevin Love. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It'd be like, how's this? How's that? So one time, I don't remember who the player was, but I would give him his questions on the index card, and he didn't like the first question, so he threw it at me. He was like, so he flings the card back, like, what is this? So he goes to the uh, whoever it was. He goes, hey man, this kid from Chicago want me to ask you this question. <laughs> so he answers the question anyway. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm embarrassed, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. And so, but after what he was doing was he was showing me why you don't ask certain questions. So right afterwards, right. everybody else would probably have been like, oh man, he's the worst person ever to work for. I went home thinking, I, I ain't going to make it here long at NBA TV. I, I ain't never did this. I ain't going to make it long. But the next time I saw him, he took me under his wing. We ate and he was like, these are the things you don't do. He's like, I played with Fran Tarkenton. He's like, so imagine if you come into me in the locker room, don't ask me about Fran Tarkenton. He's right there. And I think that's what one of the questions was, was like, what about such and such's performance? He like, if right. he takes his time to come talk to us, we gonna talk about him first. Mm-hmm. We might get that question in somewhere down the line. Right. But that person got to talk about, man, you know, this person was doing such and such. Okay, then we'll follow up. So he kind of like groomed me into the game. It's this whole working around the NBA. And I think mm-hmm. Ahmad, he took all the mystique away. Mm-hmm. So because I was working with Ahmad, who was like somebody I looked up to, mm-hmm. When C Webb and GP being there, you know, Gary Payton and Chris Webber being there, it was just like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Y'all ain't, y'all can't be nowhere near as hard on me as a mod. So this is nothing. You know the greatest saying? NBA TV duo <laughs> ever. 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 Nah, you know, we miss we missed that group. G- you know, Gary, oh, Gary yeah. Payton on TV, period, is yeah, a, no, a yeah, national yeah. treasure. Yeah, we missed money. that group. That yeah, was money. that was our first year together. Everybody. It was rough. We did that from the ground up. So anything that went bad <laughs> was all our fault. Right. Anything that went good was all our fault, but no. Oh, that was it was good so it's been crazy man because you know all kind of personalities come through i don't know that i've ever been in awe of anybody mm-hmm. um kevin garnett being around kevin garnett was weird last year was his first year it was kind of weird because now i'm like man that farragut we used to hop the l to go see him you know what i'm right. saying or was it just the pants he wears now? The, and he, kind of you said what? The pants that he wears now. He's yeah, like, no, that that like that, that, that really to it. Yeah, you know, he's seven foot one tight. with skinny jeans. Yeah, with tight yeah. on. He's shirt. real intense. Like that's yeah. really him. That's not an act. So it can be kind of intimidating. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's been cool, man, because it's like us, except they telling you. Yeah, but no, no, but let me explain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, our assumptions is more so being confirmed or denied. So it's just a bunch of big, you know, us sitting around the couch talking basketball. Okay. And so for us, I've been like in a 10-year master course on hoops. And I, that's probably what I would liken it to. Like, okay. man, I've just been on the job learning. You know what I mean? Just the most I've ever could have learned about hoops ever. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's been a blessing. It's been crazy. Um, but it's been fun, you know. So this is my, like I say, my tenth year. So this will be my tenth All Star, God willing, my tenth Finals. You know what I'm saying? Right. Go to. So it's been a whirlwind, but it's been fun. Mm. I got a question. Who? So being around the game that close, mm-hmm. is there a player that you have a better opinion of in terms of their on court performance? Mm-hmm. Kobe, without a doubt. Like I. I think I started the job I was a Kobe guy right. but by the time he retired uh-huh. I couldn't tell me nothing about Kobe just because I got to see you know up front you know like so we get we're at arenas working for NBA TV we're at the arenas uh, like eight hours before tip uh-huh. so you see people pull up you see them walk in you right. see them come out you see everybody's routine <coughs> right. you see who's there for the cameras 
you right. see who's really trying to get work. Right. The first year I was there, it was Lakers Magic in the finals. Uh-huh. Um, and Steve Smith, who I work with, I'm really close with. He's, you know, Steve Smith's like the governor of the NBA. Everybody loves Steve Smith. So <laughs> I'm telling them, like, hey, no, I'm a Kobe guy. And that, right back then, that was like the LeBron, Kobe. Uh, right, Lakers. the Muppets and all yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, it's art. You had to be one. I was the Kobe guy. So he's like, right. want to meet him? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. So right. it's uh, after shoot around game one, we had his car. He was like waiting on his driver or somebody. And I, this is the only time I've ever probably really been in awe. I do have another awe story. I get that. So I'm like, uh, so he's like, yeah, that's my man Kev. He's like, what's going on? Now he's focused. Right. About to play in the NBA Finals, right? Right. And so he's like, you ever been to the Finals before? So I'm thinking to myself, nah, but fuck, I ain't ever been to the Finals. <laughs> 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 but I'm standing up. So I'm like, nah. He goes, oh, I'm finna put on the show. Now, Kobe is like, imagine a kid that got to go to the bathroom or somebody that's really anxious for something to start. He's right. fidgeting. Like, he can't. He can't stand still. So the whole time he's like talking, he's like kicking his legs, he's shaking, you know. Right. He's like, I've been waiting all year for this because they just got killed by Boston. Right. So he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put on the show tonight. Just watch. Like that, was like, that was like, I don't remember nothing else about the conversation. Right. All I know is he went out and put up 40. And mm. I was like, damn, you know, he told Mama. us that. Yeah. The next year, he was getting ready for Boston. Yeah, right and on too. Brian mm-hmm. Shaw was assistant coach. And this is how he got ready. I don't know if y'all ever heard this. He would work in the post, and when he would turn, he'd say, smack my elbow, right? So he shoot, get his elbow smacked. So I'm watching harder. You know what I mean? Like harder, harder. This so, and Brian Shaw, he's doing this? Yeah, so he's he's basically getting prepared for the Celtics to hack him, but nothing to get called. Like, I don't want to wow. turn around wow. and argue the call. I'm just going to prepare for what's coming. I know they're right. going to bruise and batter me oh, up, come on, but they're not going to. That's not, crazy. Not like, yeah, so, you know, it's like, so for me, I think the I don't think I have a better appreciation for anybody more than Kobe. Just because I've talked to too many people that's played with him from Shaq, who has a very high admiration for Kobe's work ethic. Mm-hmm. Whose son, Shaq's son, Sharif, right. <clears throat> idolizes Kobe, wants to work with Kobe. Right. Shaq has no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like when you hear people tell her, like, nah, he's everything he did, he told you he was gonna do. Right. Yeah. So like that's like that's the only person that like lives up to all the hype. And I got a little pre Derrick Rose injury where I was like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, got to see some pre work with him and was like, this dude is, he's serious, man. Yeah, yeah, he's serious. So, me, me and Kev has, has shared a few messages about Rose. And yeah. I, not yet. It, it, as yeah, we all yeah. know, the, I'm president of the fan club over here. I, 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 it hurts. I, I, the Dallas, the year he went to the final, All Star, and it was in Dallas. I think yeah. that was 2010. 2010 or 2011. 2010 or 11. Um, the guys they play around in practice. They shoot the half court shot. Right? <laughs> oh, <yeah. clears throat> Derek went to the other end of the court, yeah, and refused to do all of that stuff. So finally, I walked over. I'm like, "Yo, uh, I think I might have been like his first or second off." So I'm like, "Man, that's your first All Star, man. Why are you not soaking it up?" He said, uh, "I want all them dudes to fear me." At the time, he just looked at it like they're my enemies. They're not my teammates. He went through a real workout. I'm not talking about dribble shoot. No, no, no. Like he had somebody. Rebounding, chucking, and he was going. He went through an entire routine, broke a lather. This is at All Star practice. That's how locked in he was. Is like I see all the buddy buddy stuff down there, but I want the whole East to fear me. You know what I mean? We don't even worry about the West. It was like these are my teammates. I want to fear me. So when we come out of this, yeah, ain't nobody buddy. You know what I'm saying? That's how he played. I remember, I remember that's when is that on, the year on the picture on the intros when he didn't yeah, dance? Yeah, like, like went to his first year starting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah his face was yeah, so man. straight, yeah. stoic, yeah. and it was like. Nigga, I'm like it was it was a killer thing. Yeah, no, like, seriously, seriously, that's how he was, man. God, I missed that. Yeah, I just, I just say like, he'll, oh, be back, he'll be back, fellas. He'll be back, fellas. He will be talk. back, fellas. No, no, he won't. He will be back. No, he won't. He, I, he I now, hope. I hope all the shit that y'all talk about, like, why y'all root for roll? Well, I hope we all never that said shit that. come we back. No, no, we y'all have. No, y'all have. No, y'all have. No, no, y'all, have. Just, y'all been talking all that shit. Like what? All that shit. The come roosters on, are come coming on. to roost. Come on. All the new Rose haters was just throwing dirt on him yeah, until right. he became a calf. And no, no, like, no. That was what made me mad. Mm-hmm. He was an enemy, so of course he was getting these memes. He was getting these good jokes. But I thought, damn. <laughs> he was the enemy. Yeah. Like, damn. I mean, look, you got to understand. <laughs> I'm from the west side. It's always been okay. I get Derrick it. Rose on the other side. I we had it. Sharon. Yeah, I get it. It was Derrick Rose over there. So I love talking about these niggas. Right. Listen, 
That you know, th- we're that, talking about the beginning. We're not I, talking I know, about forever. But I, I know, but that's that's my my gripe with all you niggas who like all you out west who talk about all these guys and like this is Derrick Rose. Like, don't talk about. I don't even care about the beginning. Erase that from your head because we you seen what he did. We won't. All right. I, I, we won't. But you seen you seen him in his prime. Losing. Oh, uh, in his don't, don't, don't ever say lose. Be, don't don't say he lose. lose. The he won. They beat Kansas. What was I? What was your favorite player there? Well, you, you gonna talk to me about some NCAA? Okay, so oh, because you know I'm a Kansas fan too, so that was like a double whammy yeah, for me. I'm talking about an NBA MVP fan. Oh, okay, and now he's with another the youngest, NBA MVP. The youngest <laughs> ever, right? Ever, right? And and to this day, Derrick Rose probably got two of my favorite dunks ever in life. When he dunked on Drogic, on Drogic. and the yeah. one at Simeon, when he did the little the little <laughs> wag wag, he said, "Yeah, dude, let's go, shorty, let's go, shorty," like like. You know me, I'm still a basketball fan. Like even my my beef with Kobe, in our in our Twitter days, you know I used to yell out mom. But Kobe last game was like probably the was, best basketball shit. Honestly, played. it was like the closest to church for yeah. basketball. It, it just took me back to being a kid. I said I was jumping up in the bed, I almost hit my head on the ceiling fan. Group chat was, was so I, lit. Everybody, I was standing up in my basement that whole last game. I was sitting there, they showing the camera. I see Snoop. I'm like Jay there. I'm like yo, this like to me. I we love the finals, all that. Mm-hmm. I, I do I, I the Kobe do. sixty? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Fam, that was. That, <laughs> uh, let me tell you about this Kobe sixty. I had to go to, not like I was being punished. I had to go to Oracle to cover seventy three. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm in. I'm in Golden State, and you know, like, we waiting on them to set the record. Steph was about to hit 403. He needed right. eight, which was crazy. Right. He got it like damn it in the first half. But you know, six hours down the road, Kobe playing. <laughs> right. So the media, you know, everybody's like trying to check, like, you know, what's Kobe doing? You know, it's all the jokes, right. just a lot of hate. Like, how many shots did he take? Mm-hmm. You know, so like at one point when people are like, you know, Kobe got 30, 40. I was like, what? Well, we we couldn't get him to cut a screen on. So literally, everything I heard. Was like Twitter memes mm-hmm. or somebody right. called somebody, but I'm focused on 73. Now I've been right. following the Warriors all year. I was one of the first people to write an article. They I was about to say you, yeah, you like, one of the very first people to write an article. I wrote, mm-hmm. he's my, they going for the record. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm locked in, but at the same time, like Kobe got what now? And I never forget, man. I went to the hotel and I was looking for the highlights, but I'm in Oakland. I'm right. saying friend. Right. Oh, they showing it 73. Right. I literally had to fly all the way back to Atlanta and like stay up at like 1 a.m. one day to watch this game by myself <laughs> as the world already know what went down. Right. And I'm watching the fourth quarter. Like, how does he get to 60? How does he get to right. 60? And he had like 20 in like the last four <laughs> minutes. Right, bro. It, it, it wasn't. That face came out. Oh, and it God. wasn't like it was a, a young man getting like, you know, like T-Max scoring 13 right. in, in that final right. minute. Like, it just looked effortless. Like, you could tell. Like, each it point, was it was like his Portion. energy bar was going yeah. like down and down, exactly. but he, he was still going to the reserve. He had the 2K Gatorade on him the whole fourth quarter. Oh, really? and, and literally, I'm standing up like watching like I'm sitting there watching them take shots that I, as much as I'm a Kobe fan, I was like, this shot's gonna miss. And it's like, oh no. Oh. And I'm sitting there, and you look at, at certain people on the Jazz who are in awe but other people like Gordon Hayward's actually low key pissed, right? He like oh, yeah. like yo, he's pissed. But it's like no, no, this he is can't embarrassing. Do that to stop it. It's Not only is he scoring sixty, y'all about to lose, right? right. Y'all about to lose. Yeah, man. and it was the the sixty needed. Like it right. wasn't a sixty. Like oh, it's a glory game. It was nah, at least some bullshit that, that points. All those sixty points was needed. No, no, was sixty. Yeah. The J sixty. And you you could tell the the young players. Like, you could tell they were shook. And I, I get it. I fully got it because I'd be like, yo, if that was me out there, right? I would be like, the competitor and you would want to kill him on his last day, right? Like, but it's like, he don't want to do that to you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and, and even if you're on his team, it's like a certain point. You like the season that he had. Mm-hmm. You sitting there like, how the fuck is he doing this? Mm-hmm. Right? You sitting there like, yo, where's this oh, ass Kobe? Right? <laughs> oh, ass Kobe. <laughs> you saving this shit, Kobe? Because my girl, my girl was like so mad. Like, in her mind, she felt like that was the most selfish thing ever. That really? Kobe had a fair will to her. Like, she's like, he's making it all about him every game. You didn't see anybody else have a fair will. <laughs> she was like, 
She hates Kobe Bryant. Well, Kareem had a farewell too. A few people had yeah. a farewell. Yeah, but she, she just hates Kobe. She just hates Kobe. Shut up, Tana. <sighs> you know why though. I know. She, oh, no. she no. any any uh, off the court issues. Uh, yeah, 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 let's okay. move on. Yeah. Whatever, Tana. Anywho. <laughs> We talk about that. Yeah, off, off, yeah, off yeah. Uh, I know what. Speaking of Kobe and Derrick Rose, a perfect segue to my question because oh, you talking about Derrick Rose. We were for a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. We, Go ahead, nigga, man, Go I really, ahead, I really his new favorite player. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like that whole shit, right? <laughs> Same nigga that still food out the work fridge. <laughs> Anywho, oh, damn. So when we talk about like Kobe and Derrick Rose and this new age of advanced stats and yeah. how the advanced stats community. Versus the, I know I, basketball with yeah, my I, eyes. I, I We're currently dealing with this in a group chat oh, of ours. But we have a youngster who's in our group chat. Very young. I don't even want to say his name because he pissed me off. Like we kick him out like once every t- I, two, three days. I think he kicked out right now as we speak. As we speak, he's probably kicked out. Like he says, like weird right. shit. Like you know, if you look at Tim Duncan and Kevin Love numbers, they kind of look. Yeah, and like you see, you like shit like that. Like you are, and I'm yeah. drinking at night, and I'm like. What are we doing? I just kick them out like every time. So, how is that internal war in like NBA writing, NBA? Uh, I mean, scouting now. Mm-hmm. How 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 is that taking shape? Because I remember when like Henry Abbott wrote that article about Kobe not being clutch. Right. But everybody with two eyes and who's watched the NBA and Kobe's mm-hmm. career was right. like, "What the fuck are you talking see, about?" See, here's the thing, and this this is. It's weird because as a researcher, right? I, and I, and I, knew I have you to that. work with numbers. Exactly. But I, I've grown to hate it. What I've this mm. is this is it's kind of twofold. This is what I think about numbers. If we play basketball mm-hmm. and in a competitive game with box scores, and we win the game, we're not thinking about the box score. Right. But if we lose, the first thing we're going to look at is the, the box, box score. score. What did I do? See what I think. I think the numbers are doing is almost is a is leveling the playing field by saying yeah but it's like the yeah but like to me numbers are for losers that's what I think stats are for because mm-hmm. because like if Kobe scores sixty and they win who cares how I many right. shots it shouldn't matter right. right the person that's mad at you're losing your mind right. because you want it done a way that even if they don't win you can say it was done the right way mm-hmm. no the right way is to get it done is to get it but this is why the game is is getting weird and I'm scared <clears throat> for a lot of our black players that don't shoot. Mm-hmm. So um, I feel I learned this. So most people, we all know analytics is basically floor spacing and a lot of threes because you're getting up more opportunities mm-hmm. to score. Three, three is, three worth, is, one, is worth more than one, two, two and blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> I had a player tell me the Milwaukee Bucks is 100% an analytical team. I can believe that. But watching it, you wouldn't know that. They're never tops in threes, mm-hmm. but, attempts and stuff like that. But the way they try to play. So this is what's weird. Is he's um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. What's my man name? Um, Braga. Thon Maker. Mm-hmm. Thon Maker. Th- yep, see? They say Thon Maker is probably one of the best mid-range shooters in the game. But because they're so in analytics, they're like, no, 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 shoot three. DeMar DeRozan. The oh. best mid-range shooter in the game. Yeah. This summer, his whole summer has been adding the three, three point shot. Yeah. Right. So I finally asked. I asked Jerry Stackhouse, who is uh, the Toronto Nine Hundred Fivers. <laughs> Let's go, Stackhouse. Right. We have one, right. one Stackhouse question right. later on. Yeah. So I, I asked Stack. I said, um, "How hard is it?" I asked him in summer league. How hard it was it would be for DeRozan to become a three point shooter? He was like. It's not hard. He said the top of his shot is perfect. When he gets to the top, everything's mm-hmm. perfect. So it wouldn't be hard. He said the problem is, is when you're that good of a guy in mid-range, A, you're not comfortable. Mm-hmm. But B, you like, if I take three mid-range shots, that's six points. Right. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed, because I'm not missing. Right. And if, but if I take three threes, A, it's two of them shots is going to get taken away now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lower percentage shot. I might only get one. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. three points. I had a guaranteed six. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a lot of times guys will, you know, hey, you know, let me go. And the coach, I had to pump fake. It wasn't, it wasn't really there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's to me, it's kind of messing the game up because I think it kind of started, not saying analytics, but this, this stuff got really messed up with the heat. When the heat came together, mm-hmm. LeBron and D-Wade, they used the word efficient a lot in, yeah. in the interviews. Yeah. Somebody got in their heads and said, if you shoot 50%, you good. Can't nobody stop us. And so it gets to a point, LeBron, let's say LeBron ain't playing well. Mm-hmm. 
he's kicking it to Kevin Love mm -hmm. because in the back of his mind, I it's not, I'm not efficient. Yeah. Well, I got to stay efficient. This isn't my shot, whatever, whatever. Or Kobe, e or even Mike, T-Mac, them guys, Iverson. Fuck it. We need three. I'm finna shoot this three. Yeah. I trust my shot. I trust my summer workout regimen. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, you know, Isaiah, we always talk about this, like the air conditioned kid, right? Like Steph Curry is is giving birth to the AU suburban gymnasium right, right, AC right. kid. No, no black, no black top, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so they can work on that kind of stuff. Right. But the guys that's making the league mostly from the inner city, mm -hmm. they don't have access to all of that. So they're gonna do what they do best. They're gonna be athletic, they gonna jump mm -hmm. high to yeah, you, right. they're gonna make a floater, dunk layer, whatever, whatever. That's what they're gonna do. But to me, the analytics is allowing more non-athletic guys from other places right, right. come into the game and take a spot from a kid who's right here who's played three years at Duke. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It could be an eighth man on the bench. Mm -hmm. And so it's going it's going to get interesting to see where it goes because the way the Warriors play, not everybody got to play like that. It's yeah. a copycat league, right? Yeah, so yeah, not everybody got to do that. that. But really, that, they, they just have two really great shooters. Yeah. It's not like they're well, analytics. Right. Three, well, three right. now. Right. They got three really great. It's not like they're, that's analytics. That's like... That's it's God. Strength. It's God given to you. Now, you gotta play your now, strength. Now that's um, that's crazy. Now when you said that, like, just trust your jump shot you worked on and all that. Them are the exact words LeBron said when they beat the Spurs. He was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna just start shooting the ball. I've been working on this. This is what I can do. I'm gonna do exactly. it." And he hit the like the, the game like yeah, that clinching yeah. shot on yeah. uh, Duncan and came with fist pump. He said that's all he was thinking. Like LeBron sorry. is really like I, I would be. I, I would be really interested to get in LeBron's head about his free throw regimen, for instance. Man, like his free throw regimen changes every time. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Somebody wrote a good article. I don't know who it was. Somebody wrote a good article last year about all the different regimens. Like they studied all his regimens. Mm -hmm. I mean, he walks to the free throw line. He's looking left and right. He's already wondering like who's looking at me. You know, he's like. At versus just look, man. This is what I work on. Mm -hmm. Stop posting the Versa climber on IG, LeBron. Yeah, right. Show me a thousand free throw makes right, yeah, in the gym. Right. That's what I want to see. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that's just that, where the game's going. That free throw average was like at oh, uh, it's like seventy eight. If seventy eight percent, he he would average like thirty if, points. If he, <laughs> he shot eighty percent from the free throw line, he'd be the all time leading scorer. About it, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 If it was the fifth, we all be drunk. Exactly. But guess what? We still drinking, motherfucker. No, we not. <laughs> we still no, drinking no, over no, here on this you, side. You, you don't know no, we're still drinking, bro. Like, hey, don't I, worry about it. We got no, shorty with I, us now. We'll I, take care of him too. We get it, bro. Just do it. Just stop talking about it. Stop making acquisitions. Just do it. And then, but I, I, I think. I think what's interesting about what you said, like coming from an IT standpoint, I just I just went to a conference where that was one of the topics about data and analytics mm -hmm. and shit. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there with the CIO of my company, Chief Information Officer. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, I think it was 100 CIOs in the room. So everybody's talking about data. And me and her, like we know each other, we got a report. Actually, I met her like really like in 2007. So we're talking and... And we look at each other, and this guy's talking about data. This other guy at the table talking about data. And I was like, I brought up sports. I said, the thing about data and sports, I say, mm -hmm. we talk about data and sports. And I say, a lot of times, what data and sports does is tell us the shit we already know. Right. I said, mm -hmm. so they sit there, and they're going to tell us. They're going to go through all this data and tell us that, you know, who the best player is at this position. I was like, but we watched the game, so we knew that. We knew I was that. Like, I was like, we knew that. And I was like... You know, and and it was funny because she was saying she feels the same way about data in just period. You know what I'm saying? In, in the technology world, she was like, she was like, um, and, and she actually said there was a study that says like data, 85%, it's, it's some weird number. I think, I know it was 85%. 85% of the time, data doesn't give us new information. Right, that's true. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, you know, and, and it's funny bringing that to sports because you're sitting there like, well, data tells us that this person, this is like, we yeah, know Yeah, like, like yeah. okay, let me like, this is probably when I really start being down on data. Kevin Love in Minnesota. Remember mm -hmm. the gaudy numbers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So many arguments. As a Bulls fan, what I always what, what I always <laughs> peeped though was he never when we played, we went a lot, right. but the Bulls are always the number one rebounding team. Mm -hmm. Because rebounding wouldn't be that great against the Bulls and his scoring numbers would be down. Well what I noticed about Kevin Love, and while I've never been a big fan of Kevin Love, he doesn't get to the free throw line. Uh -huh. So to me, it's certain stats that I can look at. Like if I don't watch a basketball game and I have to type up all my notes at the end of every game, like into every game, it's a fourteen game night. I'm sending notes out on every team to the NBA distro list, right? I can look at a box score, and I can probably tell you how the game really went. 
Mm-hmm. But that's just a basic box score. All the deep analytical stuff, mm-hmm. I don't really get the point. Like, I don't, I mean, like, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, the per, the PR rate. Like, yeah. oh, the like it's, certain, it's certain stats to me is like, I don't need that. Only because when you're trying to do all these individual numbers, if you tell me that Kevin Love has the best rebound percentage with the Wolves, that's not going to translate when you're playing next to LeBron James. Mm-hmm. LeBron got to get eight, nine rebounds a game. So, is it really that he's this great rebounder, or is he the only rebounder? Right. And he just figured out, this is how I'm going to get my bread buttered. I'm just going to make sure I get a rebound. Mm-hmm. And if I get a rebound, if I get eight offensive rebounds, I can put it back up. I'm going to score four of those. I'm going to go to the free throw line two more times. Right. I mean, like, so to me, the data thing in basketball, and for whatever reason, it's basketball that we're fighting with. Right. Like, it's, right. that's the only sport that we were, like, baseball has has embraced it. Been embraced analytics. Mm-hmm. Football, I don't really seem to have too many places for other than probably the quarterback position right. but for basketball it's almost like you know some players a lot of old players always say if i knew they was keeping these kind of stats uh-huh. oh man yeah yeah i would have i would have been doing x y or z you know right. if i could just shoot 18 times down the court like steph right. so as i cross pass half court and then have to worry about getting taken out the game like they weren't worried about stats they were about respect for the game right, right. whereas right. now it's <laughs> like nah man that's what you do go ahead do it every time you touch the ball you know what i'm saying right. yeah, the game getting kind of the, t- the the moment when I started hating the stat shit was when like they was making arguments that Rose wasn't MVP that right. year, and it was and people like, still doing it. And, and, I still and, and, say he's and, the and all the time, ever. yeah, yeah, all, all that shit. I was like, look, once and for all on the, the Rose MVP, you cannot have a pet rally in July and saying we're gonna win not one, not two, not three, not four. And then this young kid comes in and get the best record in the East. Beat you three times. Beat you was I think it was four. They only played him three times. Three times in the regular season. Swept the regular season series and then get mad when he gets the MVP award. He kind of earned the MVP award. And the same thing this year with the Cavs coming together. There's no excuses, right? If the Celtics have the best record in basketball, LeBron shouldn't get MVP. I ain't even talking about LeBron. Kyrie Irving is going to be top three in the MVP. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to hear. It. He's got a, a rookie in Jason Tatum mm-hmm. and a second year player in Jalen Brown that he's depending on. Avery Bradley gone, Isaiah gone, Crowder gone. That means the heart and soul is gone from Boston. Oh, yeah. This yeah, dude comes team. in with Gordon Hayward and Al Horford, who gets four rebounds a game, and they get four. number and they get Son number one. Tito Horford. Right. Man, he might have averaged four rebounds. Uh, he might have. He, he might have. have. But <laughs> I'm just saying, if, he, if they come in and he gets number one, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah. I don't want to hear he drew too much, he shoot too much. Wins is what matters to me all the time. at the end of the day. The we ain't arguing right. about who to, you know, all that other stuff is crazy to me. So, so. We so in the summer, this whole time we've been talking to bring you on here is for one really one reason, and let's talk about it now the the debate of all debates. Okay, why do we even bring up LeBron? When we talk about the goat. You know what's funny is I think I think LeBron has dominated his generation, mm-hmm. and to me, it's the only conversation people can have. That's right, what like, I was saying. but I don't really. I cringe every time I hear the debate. I thought about this recently. If we who who's the best power forward of all time? Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. We agree on that. Tim we Duncan. agreed on that like his fifth season. Yeah. Has like, that, has LeBron done more in his career than Tim Duncan? Think about this. Tim Duncan came in as a rookie. All right. And won in ninety or ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And basically his second, third, last year before leaving, he won. He spent at least 15 eight, years. 15 years of winning. Mm-hmm. Serious, dominance. Serious dominance and winning. Right. Lost one time. Mm-hmm. So just we'll forget that, but go ahead. But I'm just saying. He, I'm just saying, no, I'm talking in the finals. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, I'm i not so sure LeBron's done more than Tim Duncan yet. Like, before we even get to the Jordan thing. Okay. And I think that's why we got to let his career end. Because I think the, the it goes back to the data. We have so much information now. Mm-hmm. A person will reward himself. If somebody wants to tell you that LeBron James is the best player of all time, mm-hmm. they can have eight stats to tell you why he's the best player of all time. Right. But they to me... But to me, like like you said, go ahead. You think he's the best player of all time? No. I, I'm just saying... I think like, he has no chance of being the best player of all time. And I'm a LeBron stand. I just, I just don't... To mind. me... I just think there's too many holes. It's so sacrilegious when I say this. I just think there's too many holes in LeBron's game. Like, seriously. I, I don't think he can dribble well. Thank you, Kevin. His jump shot has always been lackluster. 
and he can't shoot free throws. Right. Like it's one thing for Shaquille O'Neal to not be able to shoot free throws. Because <laughs> you know, a big man, I don't shoot free throws. But when you're LeBron James and is as skillful as you are and all of it, as smart as he is, the best IQ, he's got to be smart enough to go say, all I got to do is work on my free throws, right? I don't know. I just feel like there's too many holes in this game. I don't even get on the clutch thing because I define clutch as a coach putting the ball in your hands and say, make it happen. Right. Make it happen just means get a bucket for us. Right, right. right Clutch right. isn't always just make the shot. Mm-hmm. That's something totally different. I wouldn't necessarily hold that against him. I've mm-hmm. learned to let that go. Right. Um, I think I've learned to kind of ease off that a little. Yeah. Bit. But the Kyrie moment, it wasn't like it was a driving kick. Right. It was that like, no, Kyrie. give me the ball. Kyrie dance. And, yeah, and everybody yeah. wanted to give him the, the ball, ball. Right. including LeBron. Including LeBron. Right. And it's no not. It's yeah, just, think, that's who he but is. But I think they, they saw it like, oh, you got Curry on you, go to, go crazy. So. I don't think it would have mattered who was on him at that moment. Because yeah. he was rolling. No, that was his first. That was the only points I thought he had. No, but I'm saying he, he, he had just had the 40, yeah, yeah, five, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, it was, a, it, it got to the point where it didn't really matter. So I, I mean, so to me, look, we had a heated, we had heated. I think that's why I text y'all. Mm-hmm. Then I text y'all first. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We had a very <laughs> heated debate in studio about him and Kobe, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not giving you, um, I'm not giving you him over Kobe yet. Yeah. And it wasn't just the rings. It was like. It was just like the defensive, you know, challenges that he would assume like he'll do great on the last possession. But where was you at for them other forty? Like when, like when Kobe and Ray Allen was having a, they was guarding each other. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's a lot of. That's why I think, I think the best way to handle LeBron is to wait. It's just to wait because, like I kept saying last year, if he'd have beat that Warriors team, mm-hmm. what would we have said? The people that ain't LeBron stands. If he'd have beat that Warriors team, <laughs> we'd have been like, man, I don't. Thank oh, God! No. Thank God he didn't have a chance in here. But that's what I'm saying. But, so, but, not, but not just that. We still got to look at it like he came back from three one on the seventy three and eighteen. I don't he, think he get enough credit for that either. And but you know, he, he, I don't think he get enough credit for that because I feel like if there was anybody else, the dig riding would have been. But I think that's why the debate is the debate. I think it's because they came back. He won one in Cleveland, which was never been done before, right? So he doesn't, you know, even though Mike. Nobody's ever won in Chicago before. I mean, so it was just like the parallels were there. Yeah. And then he took, you know, now all of a sudden, you told us four years ago, Kevin Love was all world, right? So now he carried the bum Kevin Love. The narrative just changed. You know, <laughs> Kyrie Irving is selfish, and he taught him how to win. And, you know, they. I mean, it's just, it's all narrative. But at the end of the day, if we're just stripping down to the core of the player, mm-hmm. I just don't see why the debate is needed. Like, I just don't see. We weren't debating Kobe. We were debating Kobe and T-Mac. We were debating Kobe and I. We were debating Kobe with his contemporaries. Yeah. We waited until he was at the end and said, all right, what would you stack him? Because we really, like like you said, though, he had those people around him you could compare him with. Like, who would we say LeBron? Who would we compare him with? Durant. You have to. Oh, you can't now. You but- can't. I mean, but you always have to say, even though Durant was like 21 when he lost in the finals, at the end yeah. of the day, to me, that's his... That's the person that he's going to always have to be. Because, unfortunately, it always happens this way. Because when Mike was coming down, Kobe was coming up. It's the same way that I think now. And I think that's what's scary to me for LeBron people. He may never win again. Yeah. I, I can. I can. Deion says that. Deion said that all the time. If he doesn't win again, are people, are they okay with that? Are you okay with saying three is enough? Three rings is enough? To me, to me. I feel like LeBron has had a successful career. If he stops now, his career yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. is successful. Oh, yeah. But I, I feel like in this world, this new world, we have this gimme, 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 now, now, now. Mm-hmm. You have to win every year. Like with LeBron, like because we compare to Mike, he has to do great things at all times. And, like, and that's a requirement, though. I know, but yeah. I, and that's what's crazy because the microscope is so real with social media. Could you mm-hmm. imagine? Oh man! Could you imagine social media in the eighties? If Mike, Mike, I'll say this: If Mike has so, if Mike from eighty eight, let's just stop at eight. Started at eighty eight when he won a dunk contest mm-hmm. and he lost to the Pistons. Mm-hmm. If you took from eighty eight to ninety eight and he had social media, mm-hmm. oh, he'd be beyond the greatest player of yeah, all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. like the sequence, the Utah Jazz sequence when he would like the steal, <laughs> the score, you know, all, oh, to man. win a, a a series. Like the things he did, I was yeah. looking back like if LeBron did this. With Twitter, mm-hmm. oh my God! You know what I'm saying? It, it could go both ways. Yeah. If a story leaked that he right. punched a teammate, mm-hmm. I, I don't, you know, I mean, who yeah. knows what that would have right. that would have come out like? But you know, I just think it's a thing where 
I think we got to be careful with the LeBron stuff because I'm not a LeBron. I'm not a LeBron basketball fan. Mm -hmm. I, I have no problem with LeBron, but I, I'm not a LeBron James basketball. I gotta really say that because people think I don't like LeBron. Mm -hmm. I'm just not a big fan of the basketball player. Mm -hmm. Just not my cup of tea. It's not what I was raised on. It's not what's in my DNA. You know. Yeah. So for me, it's just like I don't want to. I don't want us to not appreciate what he is doing. At the end of the day. What is he on? Seven straight finals? Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all not hard seven, seven straight yes. finals. <laughs> like when once once yeah. they start saying that last, I was like, man, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Man, and, and and you know, people won't throw the conferences week, blah, blah, blah. But still, seven straight finals. I put you like Somebody's this. Somebody's supposed to beat you one yet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's Seriously. supposed to sleep but one and one Every one year, yet. you know, I used to get mad because I would say every year. Somebody had played against the East gets hurt, right? Because of Derek or mm -hmm. you know, it was another team. You know, somebody else get hurt. But at the end of the day, that's a part of being great. You never get yeah, hurt at right. the end of the day. So, you know, it's one of the things, like, I just kind of want to appreciate his greatness. The the steam has come off the debate um, this summer. I don't know what I don't know what changed it. I don't know if people just kind of, like, thrown the towel in the NBA ring before mm -hmm. all the movement. It was like, look, the Warriors are great. Ain't nothing going to change. And the debate just kind of, like, went away. Yeah. But it was very heated in May and June, man. I mean, I got into yeah. some yeah. heated... Yeah. Work discussion, uh, and, I, and I've never been that guy. The only thing I was always mad at was like the reasons why people said he's not. Mike was better. Yeah, you know, like what? Like what's the prime reason? Like you said, the clutch thing. I'm like, bro, what? Why y'all always saying this clutch thing? Like, it's Kyrie saved him, Ray Allen saved him, but oh, Jordan made a great play to Paxson or Curry. But that's like, what I'm saying. That's the difference. Yeah, clutch is the ball is in my hand. And I know them all the same. Thing. But I'm saying, but no, but I'm saying the difference is <laughs> Mike was in the huddle. Hey, Steve. I understand the game. I'm going to mm -hmm. draw two. I'm going to kick it to you. You got to make this shot because mm -hmm. I'm going to sacrifice. Yeah. The Ray Allen, I was standing right there in the corner, me and Greg Anthony. Yeah. I won the bet. I the Spurs about to win. He gave me the money. <laughs> we standing in the same corner as Ray Allen. I'll show you all the picture. I took a picture with the trophy. Like, I won. Pass me my money. Finna mm -hmm. Put it on Instagram. And Ray Allen hit the shot. And I was like, oh, this is a wrap. Here go the money right back. But it was a, it was off a rebound, right? Yeah, yeah, it was it was a box. Box. yeah, that wasn't that was a scramble. He found it. It was a scramble, and it's no knock on LeBron. Yeah. But what I'm when people say he got saved, it was like, yo, if all Spurs got to do is get this rebound to knuckle it in the game, yeah. it's over. Yeah. Same thing with with Kyrie. Kyrie tried to do it again this year with the dribble, 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 yeah. bang. And then you know he does drive and kicks it to Corbin, who hadn't hit a shot all series. Why are you? I mean, it's just like certain things. It, it's almost like why don't you want that? Like mm -hmm. why why don't you want to be the one to go to the podium and say I try you know I I trusted myself more than I trusted anybody else yeah. in that moment? And we'd have been like damn. Now look as a LeBron fan, the oh, most heated yeah. I've been about this has no no this is true the fucking All Star game LeBron puts the East on his back to come all the way back against the West and doesn't shoot the last shot. I went crazy. Even Kobe was like, man, what the fuck? And is Kobe you was doing? guarding him, I think. Yeah. Yes. And Kobe was like, man, what yeah. you doing? What you doing, man? You gotta take that shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> The thing about LeBron fans, I, yeah. I, and what really gets me, the thing is, y'all have redefined the argument, like the greatness argument. Y'all redefined that definition for him, right? So we saw, we saw Mike, mm -hmm. and when you see Mike, and you like, yo, this nigga here, boy, and you see Kobe cut from that cloth, right? And then, then you, I mean, you can look all you want, but go Kobe, ahead, Kobe cut from that fucking cut, cloth. Of course, he might have game after Mike. Go ahead. So, but then y'all go to LeBron and y'all say, well, now all of a sudden y'all telling me about correct basketball plays and shit. Like, you know, and I'm sitting there like, no, nah, like me, I prefer to play with the dog of the dog. Give me that dog. Because mm -hmm. if I'm picking five and you put everybody out there, give me Mike, give yeah. me Kobe. Like, I, that's, who I'm, that's who I'm going with. Like I'm not, I'm not saying give me LeBron. I'll say yeah. this: if you ask it to me, this is this is just my because I always mm -hmm. I always test legends and players. To me, if somebody says they would want to, they rather play with LeBron, they because they worry about themselves. Mm -hmm. If somebody were said they rather play with Mike, it's because they want to win. Mm -hmm. I get no call. They don't yeah. care. They just want to win. I and I always win. find that interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll talk to certain legends, and they be like, "Oh yeah, no, I much rather play with him because you know if you play with LeBron." Your history don't change right. as a player. Yep. Right. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. Man, I ain't like, think nah, about I that. Know. But I tell people this all the time. Let's think about Kobe. To me, this is what makes Kobe so amazing. Shaq got a four-year head start on Kobe. Mm -hmm. And then two more years together, Kobe didn't even start. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. eight points, twelve points a game average, mm-hmm. right. and he still passed him up on the scoring list. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty. That's pretty much like a four or five year head start on a dude. And they still won together. Shaq still had his gaudy numbers. I don't ever really understand. So if he's cut from that cloth, I don't know why people don't think they could do the same with Mike. You just would score more points. Like it's the same right. thing where people would say, well, well, how they gonna come together with Durant? They just gonna score 130 points. Yeah. What you mean what they gonna do? That's the dumbest thing too. I don't understand. Yeah, like they just gonna it's score only one points. ball. It's only like, one ball. Okay, well, really guess what? Like when the ball going in, it's, yes. keep going it's, in. it's your it's turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody I'll just say it. The whole LeBron goat shit. Like I just bring up the 2011 finals, and we don't got shit else to talk about. We don't got shit else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so the nigga scored eight points versus Jason Kidd. Absolutely. Now that's, that's the. And I always agree with you. That, that, that is player. to me, and I tell people this all the time. That's the one demerit on his career I would never let go. I, I, won't, I won't either. I'll never cape for it. I never. I, I, I just make re- excuse. I just remember being there media day, and they're like, "We got one suit." This is it. We're going to uh, we're going to live after this. I mean, like the Mavs, can, they knew what it was. Mm-hmm. I never forget Jason Terry. He stopped me once. He can't stop me four games. I mean, they, this is this is the best player in the game, right? And they going at the best player in the game. They telling you how they feel. No knock on them, but I'm just saying they like it's he ain't. Fragile. Yeah, like people wasn't really going at Kobe in the media like that. Yeah, right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the hell with Mike. They wasn't going at Kobe, like especially without Shaq Kobe. Mm-hmm. Oh no, you wasn't doing that. You <laughs> you just wasn't doing that. When Matt Barnes did the ball and he didn't flinch, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, this dude, <laughs> right? This dude different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think I think 2011, absolutely right. That's the one thing because people say, you know, like you say, oh, such and such lost before they got there. If only if the only thing we can level is the finals, mm-hmm. that hurts. That hurts because this dude never lost, never had a game seven, never needed to come back from three one. You know none of those things. Right. But see, that's why I always say he can never surpass Mike Mazzo. They're like, oh, what if he gets four more rings? They're like, no, still, Yeah, he would have to. I mean, he, this is year fifteen. LeBron would have to have going like a three peat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> old, he'd be like, man, he old doing. And, 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 and we forget, like Mike won his last. Like Mike was thirty five out there fucking people up, Jack. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's like like legit average. Like what he averaged in that last final was like thirty five. Yeah, no, it was crazy. Yeah, like I tell you all the like time. Percentual. I tell you all the time that last finals. I was just talking shit. To I, know, I know, I know, I know, man, I know. Man, I'm so hard not to call you a bitch on this podcast. <laughs> I know. So hard. Listen, man, Mike, and and I had to watch it as I got older. Like, and and it was really the sports debates, like people talking shit. And I'd be like, yo, like. Then I, you know, you go to YouTube and you pull up whole games. Man, and when you can like, watch whole games on YouTube, and you would really... be looking at this at these games like. All right, like Mike has like this mid range was just wet. Like wet. it was like just know. like, and I was sitting there, and, and then once you know the whole narrative of Mike, it, it puts me in this mind frame. I can't imagine the Breakfast Club workouts that they had to go through. Oh yeah, oh. but for his body to be in that shape, and then the the flip side of that, his body to be in that shape, and then for his like just shot and for his game to change. I'm like, yo, that's that's like incredible. Like Bro, it's And guess and, and Mike wouldn't have been Instagramming his workouts. Then right. Mike, right. <laughs> Mike Mike wouldn't have been Instagramming his workouts. Right, he just had come fly with me and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. you had to come do a movie on Mike, goddamn it. Oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, no, I hey, look, look, you'll never hear me say I talk shit just to troll, but you know I'm I'm never taking LeBron over Mike. Like, yeah. come on, man, how much he averaged against the Suns? Shit like that. Forty one and a half. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit like that is just never happening again, bro. You know what I mean? Like with no threes though. Like he yeah, wasn't shooting what three saying, at all. He just knew to get to the line, and he was gonna make eighteen free throws. So I, I, I let's 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 take this somewhere else. We spent too much time talking about old boy. Mm-hmm. Um, listen. Um, new season coming up. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a lot, mm-hmm. lot of shit that mm-hmm. shook. Time, uh, timing is perfect here because if we of, got you a couple weeks before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, though, a, lot I'm of, a lot of people that, that just came together. Like some GMs been working. Like just For the first time time. Some, some people right. been working. They're definitely like, trying. Yeah, they, they trying. They like man, we gotta we gonna mount and and I'm surprised because I'm sitting here like like. I was sitting here, you know, a few months back, everybody was like, ah, same teams again. Mm-hmm. Go to States winning. Right. right. Right? And now you're looking like, you stroking your chin. Like, shit, shit may get, get yeah, nah. real interesting. Might get injured this time around. You know what I mean? You don't know what happened. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know. It's funny. I'm, when the Chris Paul move happened, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, this <laughs> don't even make sense. Right. But then when I heard Carmelo was interested, then it made all the sense in the world. Uh -huh. I thought those two players needed a guy they both respected on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Like, if Chris respects him, but Harden doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't help make that extra pass. Like, right. kick, kick, you know, swing, swing, like, boom. Right. I think without Melo getting there now, I, I'm worried about that team. Okay. I mean, they could probably win in the regular season, but man, right. hell no, nah, in the regular, you know, in the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> but to me, that OKC team, when you bring in Paul George and Carmelo, that means you always have. You always have a guy with the three of them that can get a bucket mm -hmm. no matter the point of the game. If one of them can always sit down, you got Paul George who can defend like hell. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, they, I think they can be matchup problems. They bench is weak, but you know you got all season to, to you know improve a bench. Right. A guy get mad, somebody get bought out, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that you know that team is interesting, but. I was telling somebody the other day, the the sleeper in the West, not to win anything, but to mess everything up, is Portland. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's say Portland has a whole year with Yusuf Nurkic. Mm -hmm. So now they, mm -hmm. they technically got three players. Um, maybe Evan Turner plays better this year. I don't know. With Alan Crabb out, maybe he plays better. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but let's say they, they play better and they somehow get the four seed. <coughs> and the Spurs... Maybe the Spurs finally take a step back. I don't know, but let's just say. <clears throat> well, now it gets really interesting because the Warriors, who we're going to pencil in at number one, they get Portland again. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So the, the the role really ain't that tough again. It's Pelicans or the King, whoever gets AC, right. mm -hmm. the Blazers. Now you got the other side of OKC and Houston killing each other. Yeah. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm mad he didn't come, you know, Melody didn't come play for us. And, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And now it's like, if one of them teams come out of that licking their wounds, I'm almost like, are we back at, are we back at square one? Right. <clears throat> See, a part of me kind of wished Melo ended up in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought things would have been a little bit more balanced because I don't know how much Westbrook uses both of those dudes. You know what I'm saying? There's one thing to have one. There's another thing to have two that he got. He has to feed both right. of them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like as crazy as the West looks on paper. If everything sets a certain way. <laughs> it may playoffs. be January before we really know what the West going to look like. Because they gonna, it's going to take time. You so know what I'm saying? So how do you feel about, do you feel like OKC can match up with Golden State? I think they can on the, on the surface. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is they can't defend Golden State. Yeah, yeah, they can't they can't defend Golden State at all. Because mm -hmm. uh, whoever is on whoever Carmelo's guarding <laughs> is gonna be getting backdoored. Because you know the, the Warriors. What makes the Warriors so good? You know, people need to understand this. The entire NBA uses high pick and roll, mm -hmm. except the Warriors. So every night you're you're preparing for some variation of this high pick and roll yeah. offense, mm -hmm. and they don't they coming yeah, at you with backdoors. Back door, back door. And they just going to keep moving until you make a mistake. They, they have what we call like a mistake offense. Like, we're going to keep moving until you make a mistake. And when you make a mistake, bam, we got you. And I just think. That's how they got them 30 dunks. Yeah, and I just think, as much as I, you know, not to go back to the Cavs, but as much as I love Derrick Rose, he's always been susceptible to the back door. Mm -hmm. Always been susceptible to the back door, right? Yeah. That's something that they'll drop Steph on, you know what I'm saying, and be like, all right, you think you're going to the three-point line, boom. And then he get a couple of those, or he catches it next to, he makes the kick pass. So the Warriors to me is still like light years ahead because they all played together last year. Mm -hmm. They added Nick Young, who they're gonna put a battery in his back. <laughs> this dude, to me, you know who he is? He's the new J.R. Smith. Remember when J.R. got to the Cavs and everybody was like, I don't, I don't know about this. And then they just made him, the, that's got about to be Nick Young. Nick Young's a legit 6'7". They're gonna use him to defend at times. Mm -hmm. They can actually go line us with Eagle Dollar, you too old today. You have a seat. <laughs> Come on, Nick. You come Swag. in. You're going to be more athletic. You're going to be a way better shooter. You know what I'm saying? So, to me, I think the Warriors are still light years ahead. But OKC, if they can figure it out, they if can the, if, scare if, if they If they can figure it out. They like, can figure I, it out. You, you know what? You know what I, I feel? I was, it's kind of like what I said earlier. And the, and the thing is, I'm, the way the game goes, if you get in the last – Four minutes of a game, mm -hmm. and it's just both of them right. starting fives, right. and it's it's and Draymond it's versus 97, 97. Ooh. That's gonna be a real in, like that, that's, that's gonna be must see TV. Like I, I need to see what happened because 
the Westbrook that you had last year, the, the drive, and then right. it's like I'm looking for right. Steven Adams or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that Westbrook by the playoffs has to dissolve. I don't mm-hmm. think it, I don't think it's gone to start with just because he did that for so much. Here's what's crazy though: Westbrook can average a triple double again. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. No. True. He just don't need to score as much. Right. You know what I mean? Like to me, if I'm Westbrook, I ain't even shooting threes. I want to make I want to make it so hard for the defense to stick with me because I'm gonna put so much pressure. I'm not ever letting them off the hook with a three unless I'm just rolling. I'm in rhythm, mm-hmm. not catching the shoot kind of deal. And see, that's what I mean by like the figuring it out. Because if you can make mellow Olympic mellow, man, that's 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 everybody. If, 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 if he can be Olympic mellow, last year he shot forty two percent from three, which is great on catch and shoot opportunities. So like he's just telling you, if you want me to just catch and shoot, and that was just with. The Knicks. Right. And who knows what the hell the Knicks was running. Who knows what they was running and what them opportunities was like. He could probably catch the ball and spin it now. A couple, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With if they so Billy Donovan got a coach. Right. That's, That's another key. X factor. That's key. You know what I'm saying? And um I don't know, that team's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because I don't know who they could bring off the bench to finish games and say, Roberson, sit down. Uh, you know, let we're gonna make it more space on the floor. Cause that's the thing. Russ can't shoot. They backcourt can't shoot. So at the end of the day, you still kind of easier to defend when you're saying it's really five on three. Packing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Packing in on them and just saying we're going to shade this side of the floor. So that's what I say. If they can figure it out, if they can figure it out, they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be scary to me. That's the scariest. Nobody else in the West does anything for me. Nothing. Yeah. Like, I just don't see the Rockets. Like, man, they'll score a lot in the regular season. I know a lot of people going to say, what about Minnesota? Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good question. Minnesota probably has the look. Minnesota probably has the biggest uphill to climb because first of all, the core of their team never won anything. That includes Jimmy Butler. I know everybody loves Jimmy Butler out here, but listen, as the best player on his team, he's he missed the postseason, and then he flamed out against Boston when Rondo got hurt. <laughs> yes, he did. And he has never won a playoff series as the best player on his team. So at the end of the day, he's got to learn how to win and lead again. Yeah, lead. You know what I'm saying? He's got to learn how to play with two guys who on the up and up. And they probably already thought this year was going to be their year. And now they get rid of Zach, their boy. Because they were really close. They, those three were really close. And Thibodeau is not an offensive guy. So if they're going to not, they're not going to commit to defense, then it, that season could be long for Minnesota. I think I, them top, you know, let's say three teams, um, Golden State, Houston, OKC, even the Spurs. I feel like I, I like what Minnesota's doing, but this season it's going to be circles. It's going to be circles running around. Minnesota like, still can't shoot. <laughs> yeah. Like, so that's a big mm-hmm. that's a big glaring issue for them. Right. Unless Wiggins came back. But that's still only one person. You know what right. I mean? It, I, I don't see Jimmy Butler just turning into Ray Allen. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. the, the, I mean, at the end of the day, they just don't have – they just don't have those kind of guys. I love Jamal Crawford, but this is – Year 17, 18 right. with Jamal Crawford. Right. At, some point, right. yeah, at some point, Jamal Crawford's going to have a year with him. Like, man, he can't hit those shots anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Same way Dwayne Wade was getting hung on the rim last year. Oh. He had to be Jamal threes. You know, yeah. He ain't going to be getting them four-point plays. And, you know, mm-hmm. so, you know, they yeah. – I, look, I like Minnesota on paper. I would love to see them come together just to be different, just to be that new energy of the West. And mm-hmm. But I don't – I wouldn't put no money on the Minnesota. All right. Nah, I'm not. Nah, we're putting like I like Clippers back in the lottery. Love the Clippers. Yeah. I love the Clippers. Okay. Personally, I thought the Clippers got better. Yeah. Okay. Like to me, you got to get rid of a star a year too early before a year too late. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So everybody, you know, I, I was arguing. Everybody saying uh, this is about Rose. And Rose and Chris Paul numbers was comparable outside of the assists. <laughs> they both averaged eighteen. Both shot forty-seven percent. <laughs> I'm just saying. So at the end of the day, today. I'm just saying. Say. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, if they got rid of him, they got a guy who's gonna come in and defend and push the ball forward. I, I think it. I think they. They could be good. They could be good. I mean, at who's the that, end, who's that two? Uh, who they're starting at the two? They, uh, I guess Austin Rivers for now. Okay. okay. I, I'm for now, but I mean they got uh they got Jesus. they got Sam Decker on the team. Oh, okay, okay. They got um they got a few people they acquired. Yeah, I mean they you know they they got like a makeshift team, but I still I'm like to me I still think the Clippers are gonna be better than people. Mm. They're probably on par 50, 50 wins, fifty five wins. You know what I'm saying? They'll be on par for the course. 50, 55 wins that era. Because people going to come to L.A. kicking it. 
We're playing the Lakers and the Clippers. They both suck. Chris Paul ain't here. They're not going to come out of all those wins. The Lakers going to get some wins that way. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna get they're gonna get some wins just off. I can see fifty and thirty two for the Clippers. I can't. It's still fuck Chris Paul over here. Oh, anybody ever won? Nah, yeah, eighteen games over five hundred is a lot. I get him forty five for the Clippers. Yeah, I give him forty five. Shit, what? Yeah, that's a lot. We are gonna see. I, but, you, but you know, I'm I'm also a Blake. I'm I'm a big Blake fan. Like I really like Blake. It's just it's just something in me. I really like Blake. Uh, I like Blake. Yeah. I, I think I don't think him and Chris was ever a good fit. <laughs> if you go back and look at no, we talking numbers. Just go look at his scoring. Yeah. He didn't score well with Chris. He was a better scorer without Chris. Yeah, like that year that Chris Paul missed like four months yeah. when, when Blake was going ham. Just go look at the year before Chris even got on the Clippers. Blake yeah. was rolling. Oh yeah, and I'm like, oh yeah, he gonna take him to the next level. He's the best leader in basketball. Yeah, that Tuff. one guy. Tuff. Nah, Tuff. I think that's when I lost all. I was a D. I was a D. I was a D wheel guy. In the in the D wheel Chris Paul uh, debates, I was always a D wheel guy. <laughs> Talking about somebody letting Nas down. Man. Man. <laughs> like uh, that's when I heard good. when I heard Richard Jefferson say on his podcast, like when D wheel got in the game, like you could see the Warriors getting happy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they was getting. I'm so, sorry, was getting excited. I, I I know his stature throughout the NBA. Oh, like, he's done. Oh, like but I know like <laughs> people have lost yeah. like respect for him because they openly like talk about like when but Paul think Pierce, about it. He he literally. Is it on a team? The season starting Tomorrow. seventeen days. Yeah, yeah, like he's done. Nobody even threw out what about Darren Williams for this team? Yeah, Carter he's done. Calderon got picked up over there. Calderon yeah. is a, is on yes. That that, that, that is says true. a lot, and that says a lot about the team that had D Will last. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so no, 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 no. Like once Richard Jefferson of all people came out and said that, absolutely. Like it was like, oh, ain't nobody fuck with him at all because at least if he was like a nice teammate. You wouldn't have said that and shit. And I'll say this. Richard Jefferson and Channing Fry is the locker room in Cleveland. Like, yeah. those, those are the leaders in the locker room. That's the glue of the locker room. If those guys are saying that, I can only imagine what everybody yeah, else is saying. Yeah. They I saying can, it. They, they being diplomatic about it. I mm-hmm. can believe those two being uh, Yeah, yeah. but because, like, man, once Paul Pierce was like, yeah, we thought Darren Woods was going to take us over the edge, uh-huh. and we had to do all the work. Me they, and was ready, they was ready to put the, 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 the team on his shoulders, man. Brooklyn. <laughs> Man. Look, yeah, once I told I told niggas that motherfucker lost to a Bulls team that shouldn't even had a motherfucking chance. Well, that's right. That shouldn't have had Nate a Robinson. chance with Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson Bulls. Oh, Let's man. go, Nate. <laughs> yeah, the Nate Robinson. Bulls. So, I won't. I won't slander Chris Paul this episode, for Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. These niggas, they, they be so upset when I'm, I go I'm on not Chris. A Chris Paul guy. Come on, we oh. my boy here. Woo. My boy here. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, <laughs> about the East. Minus Cleveland, like what? What? Oh, yeah, what's the top playing. four? No, I'm saying like what's the top four in the East? Like, who's out? Uh, exactly. Shit. Cleveland, Boston, no, they, Toronto, and there's Washington. There's four. Yeah. You, There's the four. There's you, four you with a sleeper. With a sleeper. No, with a, Milwaukee's the sleeper. Milwaukee. I still give Toronto the edge. Okay. Because uh, they was able to, they was able to retain a Baca. I mean, they, at the end of the day, they. Could I mean, yeah, four. but you know, I now I'm thinking about it, man. Like Dwayne Casey is still a coach. Four. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they, at the end of the four. day, I can see the Cavs not winning the East. I can see the Cavs saying, "Who cares? Let's get Isaiah right. They got to figure things out." Dwayne Wade. I wish Paul George. Let me would. say this while we talking about the East. This is to Cavs fans. I'm worried about the Dwayne Wade acquisition. Oh, baby. Because I just feel like him and LeBron can fracture the team. Because they're so mm-hmm. close. That? that brotherhood, yeah, their brotherhood is so close. They already toasting wine on Instagram at LeBron's house. Mm-hmm. But the rest of the team, mm-hmm. I think they need to, I think they have to do a better job from yesterday one mm-hmm. and bring the group together and say, this is how we did things. Mm-hmm. In Miami, let's bring some of that culture okay, here. Sure. 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 We had a lot of you know, they need to be talking to roles like we had a Ray Allen that came in that was great and he was able to take this role and you know and Isaiah, you you know, you gotta be able to take this role. And they I think they need to use their time in Miami to talk about all the different people that came together to make winning possible because the difference with this team in Cleveland, them dudes won. Mm-hmm. J Smith got a ring. So you're not you, Dwayne Wade, you can't necessarily come tell me how to win. I already yeah. won. You know what I'm saying? I think J. R. Smith should start. Still, I, absolutely. Oh, I definitely start. say. And everybody been putting weight in. I'm like, everybody keeps talking. You know, some respect thing and three rings. Look, man, fuck that. three we, rings we ain't defending. We had the worst shooting star yeah. lineup in the NBA. Them, I, them three rings not defending Clay Thompson. As, as someone who watched Dwayne Wade all last year, that motherfucker should not start. No, he shouldn't start. And I, I really respect. He can still play, but not yeah. start. But 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 as totality though, in some way, shape, or form, Boston, Cleveland. 
Washington, Toronto. Milwaukee. I wish Paul George would went to Washington. That would have been interesting. Yeah, that, I, would, that, I wish KD would have went to Washington when he had a chance. Because I felt like that would have changed the dynamic of the East. I think the, part, I think the hard part about that, though, is I think it's easier for KD to play with Steph yeah. than John Wall. Oh, of course. Like the John Wall mystique and ego and all. It's just. Yeah, because him and Bradley Bill took, like, took a while deep. to get along. Yeah. yeah, they got they got, they got got things that's <laughs> in the way. <laughs> you know, like Brad, I think Bradley Bill is a little bit more, I don't want to say mature. He's a little bit more settled. Mm-hmm. Relationship. Right. Where John Wall is just more of his free yeah, spirit. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Yes. And so. That because they're not as close off the court, I think right. it kind of spills over sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I think now John Wall knows he all I got. You know, what I, mean? I think the, I think mm-hmm. Washington, I think Washington will be a lot better this year. Mm-hmm. But I still think uh, it's Cleveland, Boston. Yeah. yeah, from everything I heard, Wall my kind of guy off the court. <laughs> yeah. like, and, and Harden, <laughs> oh, oh, you definitely know, Harden. I, you know, definitely Harden. I still think Harden threw that game six, but we got to talk about that <laughs> on the air. <laughs> Cannot confirm with the <laughs> hey, we, we will not talk about that. Man, Look, this is what's going on. Too much. You can say that's too, too much. much. You, you saw, saw, we, saw we, we, know, we talk. We have a nice group chat. Um, <laughs> we might have to have Kev download group me. Oh, man. Kev, Kev can't be in this group. He just, first off, as soon as Twan start talking, he's going to be like, all right, this is what you got me around. All you're going to see is Kev has left the group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, do y'all got any any final? Quinn, Kev, you writing a book? Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm writing, yeah, writing a book. Writing yeah, so a book. right now I'm writing a book, uh, uh, interviewing twelve basketball legends because it's gonna be a woman in the book. Um, just about like the greatest game they've ever been a part of. Okay. It's not necessarily the greatest game they've ever played, but it's a great game that they were a part of. So everything right. from how that season began to how that game kicked off and finished and the ins and outs of it. Mm-hmm. I do have a, a woman. I got 12 people. I got eight done already. I got a coach. Okay. Um, I got a lot of big name players from Shaq, uh, Isaiah. You know, I got Vince Carter. Mm. Uh, Vince Carter so far is probably my favorite story. Okay. We break down the dunk contest. Um, okay. mm. Yeah. So we getting a lot of the ins and outs of just things that, you know, you're looking at it. I, so whoever I interview, I go back and watch whatever it is and just take full notes. And that's how I come up with all my questions. Okay. Um, but a little, I'll give you like one little sneak peek from Vince Carter. I bet you guys never noticed this. You watched the Vince Carter dunk contest a thousand times. Mm. Vince Carter busted his hand before the dunk contest, wide open with a weight. Mm. Go back and look at the dunk contest. His right hand is wrapped, like mm. his fingers are wrapped, and um, he still did all that amazing stuff. I think it was like the day before he busted his hand. Didn't think I twice about that, about coming out. I never noticed it until I finally, um, for whatever reason, the it's over. Uh-huh. I noticed it, and then I asked him, and that's when he, you know, he gave me the story. So it's it's gonna be some good stuff. Like I said, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of stories about a lot of games you guys know about. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, Shaq's birthday game, he scored sixty one. You know, yeah, um, Isaiah Thomas when they won the second the second NBA Finals against uh, Portland, they beat Portland mm-hmm. for the second one. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of different stories like that. Um, just kind of how it was. I uh, got Dennis Scott on when they eliminated the Bulls in '95. Um, that was a the, that was a, a great story. They lit the horse and the uh, yeah. Oh no, yeah, oh yeah, 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 all that. So you know, um, <laughs> it's interesting though. Like I said, because I'll start from training camp with these people just to mm. get them uh, in their head right. of what the, what they went through to get to that moment. Right. Um. Yeah. So that's dope. I yeah. So it, it, it's gonna be good, man. I still ain't came up with a title. So if you got a a good basketball title, y'all got to shoot it to me. Let me know. Mm, and it's about games. I have restricted area as the as the title, and a lot, you know, I kind of got mixed mixed responses to that. Um, mm, but the, I don't know about that. I thought the restricted area was good because that's the only thing that was synonymous with basketball right. without any other sport. Mm. And I thought I was bringing you into like a restricted area. That's that's kind of <laughs> that was the okay. Concept. Okay, was I can see, concept. I can see that. that I can concept. see that. But that was the concept. <laughs> the, 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 that was the concept. <laughs> I, see, so, I see the concept. I see but, uh, it. So now, so I'm, you know, I'm back on the, uh, I'm back on the cutting room floor with the title. So if y'all think of something, right. shoot it my way. You know what I say to do? It, it, just, just me. I would say, don't even title it, right? But what you tell whoever's doing your cover art, 
what the book is about. Let them do the art and then let the title. That's not a bad idea because uh, sometimes you know it, it, it comes last. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm I'm working on right now, man. I only got four four more people to go, so okay. once I get that done, it'll be hot rapid fire question, real quick. Yeah, greatest NBA game. Everybody answer that. That you that you that I've seen live. that you seen live on TV like that you that you just jump your memory. I always say. I always say Lakers Celtics Game Seven, but no, I, I not just because a Bulls fan. Derrick Rose in Atlanta in the playoffs, forty four. Oh my God, that was probably the best game live. Where I was like, he can't miss. I mean, he was bouncing, the jumper was falling, the layups was going. It was literally like a one man band, not like a thing where like one guy is just you know the team is just clicking. This was just one dude clicking with Keith Bogans as the shooting guard. Keith fucking Bogans. Keith Bogans. fucking Bogans. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, so I still think, I, I don't remember which game it was, but I feel like it was like... Game three. I think it might have like, because I... It was game got, three, because it was the, tied 1-1. He got and he the MVP that. and lost at home. We lost mm-hmm. at home. Game, that was game one. He got yeah, the so I think it was game three, and I was like, yo, this might be the most amazing game I've ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that was probably it. Some of the Heat Spurs series were good, but that was probably that was probably Fresh. It. Uh, last year, game seven. 2016 game seven, oh, just because yeah. of the range of emotions. You know, the LeBron and me yeah. when it came back. He still yeah. has it like on his DVR. Like if I'm over his house, he like just randomly turns on. DVR. Yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. game. Like, bro, I probably that's probably the only basketball game I ever watched that I probably got emotional because I was just like, what? Like it that was game good. was pretty magical. Yeah, because yeah. Draymond, Draymond was like minutes away from being Finals MVP. I, I mean, was if you go, I mean, his stat line was a LeBron line. Yeah, he he would have like been the final. Man, he would have been finals like MVP. I think he was like and, one rebound or assist. And, and, and as much as I'm not a fan of dude, that block, like yeah, when that, it happened that, live, the LeBron block, that LeBron, I like when it happened live, I we, jumped when he jumped. When we was like Will Crib, like the whole crib was like, what the fuck? He went on TV. You gotta give Earl partial credit on. Yeah, Earl made Earl made him because everybody it's the half second. It's the old Jordan Scotty. Old Jordan Scotty thing. Like yeah. Somebody reached for yeah. it. So he, he never. Yeah. He yeah. made him change his layup. So. Yeah. Because they were like, I should have done. I mean, uh, Iggy should have dunked. I'm like, no, no, he reached for it. He had to, like, double. And Iggy was already injured, so he wasn't yeah. going to dunk it anyway. Yeah. Dion? Um, as much as I would love to give you a televised game, I can't because the feeling you get from a live game can't be duplicated. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was a game. Me, you, KP with the, the Bulls Heat. The Bulls Heat playoff game. I didn't go to we, Emmett Till's open casket funeral. Listen. It's the closest thing to an open casket we funeral I've been so, to. Uh, <laughs> like, it was like, and, and granted, I, I tell you, I'm a Lakers fan, but the Bulls, yes, the Bulls, they definitely are a team that I root for. They are the, the number two team. It's like, regardless, because it's like, they the Bulls, right? So, and I love Derrick Rose for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Since college. Mm-hmm. So, seeing that game, like, we were there. I'm telling you, when I tell you that UC 13. was rocking. I was we high were, five we and baby. This was a playoff game? Yeah, game yeah, five. The, the game, the game with, uh, where LeBron and Wade came back, just came and, back. and closed the door on the UC. And and I never felt. I blame Oprah. You know. Oh, that was the Oprah game. No, yeah. that was Oprah series. That was the series. Oprah did. Yeah. Oprah blew that. Yeah. When, when uh-huh. you, she blew that. The Bulls won game one. one. And she threw the time she threw off. The, she threw the time off because she had the big show when her oh, farewell yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like a long ass break in between game one yeah. and two. Yeah, I, yeah I, she did. It, it she was. Did. She broke our momentum. Yeah. Wait. Like, Thanks, Oprah. We were so geek. We were so happy. Every, I'm talking about high five. We was Man. really high five people that we didn't know. Everybody was like, it was like a love fest in the mm-hmm. UC. Like, everybody was like, yes. And then. D Wade and and, and D Wade D Wade started hitting threes and I was like this One, shit he this got shit a, is not right he got a four point play and that's when yeah. the whole UC yeah. was like shit and everybody so, like started sitting yeah. down I'm starting praying I'm like everybody be cool it's straight but in my mind I'm like no it's not I didn't I didn't been to the UC for a lot of games that was the one like literally it was gone the life. It was so Fuck quiet up, once it was done. Like, people weren't born. People weren't like it was. It was a quiet, and we were all like, and walking out, and then you got these fucking Heat fans walking through there, and they Heat jerseys and LeBron jerseys, and motherfuckers just start cursing at them. And I was like, like that's what a live game do to you. You sit there, yeah, you I'm like, so I'm, I'm, it up. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I've never thought about injuring someone at a sporting event, but that was it. That was it, like, like man, like, 
I was ready to go to jail that night. Like I, I think you forgot you called me. You I called me and you called me like, I'm not even gonna gloat. I'm. Just, are you okay? I said I'm riding in the car with no music. What's, yeah. your, what's yours? Ain't Mine. Even though, like you said, a live game is better than a televised game. The emotions that went through my mind, game six, 2009, Bull Celtics first round. I was like literally rolling in my living room on the floor like, what the fuck? I can't take another overtime. Yeah, that was the Ben Gordon game. The, the, no. The, that, was, that was the Rose. The, the, that was the Rose. Rose. Joe Kim Noah dunked on dunked. Paul Pierce. Oh, yeah, and got, yeah, got, oh, like, yeah, that yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah. That that I mean, yeah, that series in yeah, general was yeah. awesome, but that game alone. Man, Noah dunked on Paul Lee. I like this shit real. That game alone, like, oh, my God. Like, I can still watch that game. Yeah. I like that game. Like I like I went through emotions. I cussed yeah. out Vinny Del Negro multiple times in that game. John Salmon, John Salmon, like a bona fide, a bona fide second tier star. John Salmon with the ugly step back to the rock. man. Oh my God, the, the rock, the rock. Oh, and 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 Rose blocking Rondo at the end. Oh man, like oh man, I almost flipped GD. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question before we get out of here. While we're discussing this, and them blue fans just came out. So, like, I seen an episode of NBA TV. It was um, they gave Isaiah Thomas the ball, and they're like, "You can still handle that thing, Zeke." He like, "What?" And he start. Pat, 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 pat. So, like, is it anything you see in a studio? Like, this guy's been away from the game, and he still. You could tell that guy was an NBA player. Like, the way Zeke was dribbling that ball at 55 years old. Uh, Zeke, uh, I tell you all the time, probably one of my favorite nights is T-Mac came in the studio. And mm-hmm. Isaiah Thomas drafted T-Mac. Mm-hmm. So, they have long, long history. And I don't even know how. Oh, Isaiah loves to shoot. Like, Isaiah still loves to play. Right. So, he's a guy that if if he walks in the studio and I'm dribbling, he'll D me up. You know what I mean? Like, he, mm-hmm. he's like that guy. And I think it was one of them nights where he just wasn't really missing. And T Mac felt some kind of way, mm-hmm. and they end up having a, a contest. Everybody leaves work. It's like me and one other person, and they're playing. I think they were playing horse. They were playing horse, but it was just basically shooting threes mm-hmm. all night. And we were probably in there for like forty five minutes because they wouldn't miss. <laughs> it was just like you go, you go, you go, you go, you go. But now, now it's talking smack. You know, T Mac talking himself. Come on, T Mac, he drafted you. He drafted you, fam. You got come on. You got to make this. And he go. And then I said, "Oh, come on. You can't, young fella. Get that young fella. Get it going." I said, "Won that." Now, if you ask T Mac, T Mac can say he won. But now Isaiah won that, and I it was impressive because you know we don't know Isaiah to be this long distance shooter. Me and Isaiah shoot a lot in uh, we go out in the Warriors practice facility. We always going at it. He can't miss, and it's impressive because like you say, he's old. Um, Shaq. Shoots threes really well, mm-hmm. which is amazing. We getting all of the three point competitions, mm-hmm. and it's it's regulation. Like our court is the NBA court, mm-hmm. so it's right. not like it's just some studio stuff. Um, Steve Smith, the trick shot master, he got all the trick shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, apparently, they used to call him Tricky in the league because he used to literally like wow. carry around like magic stuff. <laughs> like so he, his sleight of hand is like very real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like seriously, man. So. In terms of a lot of the old guys, yeah, I've seen a lot. There was probably Reggie Miller don't miss. Uh, who else has been in? Uh, if, th- if 3D then this guy once he gets going, he ain't gonna miss. Right. It's kind of like they always just say that the jump shot's the last thing to go. Right. Them dudes, man, they can shoot anywhere, anytime, any place. Just give them the ball, give them a shot or two. Uh, and Vince Carter, uh, Duncan in, in loafers when he was uh, working with us like during the finals. Right. Vince Carter is crazy. You know, he's crazy with it. But them dudes, man, if you challenge any of them dudes to do something, oh, they'll do it. They'll do it. Wow. It's man. And I want you to wrap this show up. You normally don't wrap it up. I want uh, you to I, wrap it up. I mean, the NBA is, is your show. You know, you know, you know, know it's my baby. I, I know stats like the back of my hand because I ain't had cable growing up. So I just read books. <laughs> Oh uh, man, Kev, thanks once again, man. We're oh, yeah. looking forward to when the book drop. Um, we'll figure out a title for you. <laughs> yeah, restricted area. I don't know. We to we be fi- to be determined. To be determined. Yeah. Um, man, another great episode. Of no foreplay. Um, ladies, it's probably won't be your favorite episode, but you get yeah, everything okay. else. You'll be fine. <laughs> um, no foreplay. We out. No foreplay. No foreplay.